So this is hopefully just a quick video with a little bit of demonstration. I'm going to mention a bit about mixed media stuff. So mixed media, I use things like, this is matte gel. It's Winsor Newton. I have use Golden. I use Liquitex. If you're somebody who's just starting out and you're just playing, by all means, like a Mod Podge will work. If it's something where you want longevity, um, in art we talk about things that are archival, which is supposed to be acid-free and long-lasting kind of gallery quality. If that doesn't matter to you, if you're making a gift for someone, if you're doing a craft with your kid, if you're doing something just for yourself and you're just playing, Mod Podge that you can get at Michael's is, is perfect. You don't need to spend as much as some of these cost. Matte gel is, is a gel, it's what it says. It's, it's thicker, so you can have it and it won't drip. So if you are gluing down something like a postcard or something that's kind of thicker cardstock or an object like a coin or coffee grounds, uh, a tea bag, you know, whatever kind of like little object, if you're gluing something like that down, matte gel is going to be your best bet because it's thicker and these little gears. So I have lots of random objects from my mixed media days. If you put like something like that down, the other trick that you're going to want to do with that is you're going to want to press it down a bit. An X-Acto blade is a better option for this, but this is what I had available. This is the same kind of thing that can also make marks if you want more kind of drawn marks in your paint. This will work for that too. It's just a marker that was once an India ink pen that was great and then it died and now I use the tip for mark making and paint. Because it's thicker it will actually hold that three-dimensional object in place. It's that little gear which is metal. I mean it is a little piece of metal so it holds it. You'll also have, this is gloss medium. It's a lot like matte medium. It's liquidy. Can you hear it? This, if you shake these guys, you're not gonna hear anything because it's really thick. Gloss is just shiny. Matte is matte. So matte is dull. It's, it's not shiny. It all has to do with personal preference. One isn't necessarily better than the other. It's just kind of what you like. This one is pretty thick. They're not normally quite as thick as this one is, but you'll even see that it's starting to settle where this is already starting to kind of smooth out and kind of give way to gravity more. If you're just putting down paper, then this is great. You don't need a super, a super thick kind of medium to, to hold it in place. So I just kind of spread it out a bit. Now my paint is wet. Normally you would probably wait until this layer is dry, but you don't have to. It's just when it's wet it will change as you go because it's wet. Uh, Tissue paper is super fun because when it gets wet it's translucent. You can see whatever is underneath it. The other thing with that though is it's very fragile. So when you put it down you tend to want to have it all spread out, have your glue spread out so it's ready for it, and then you can press this in place. The paint and, and you know water or any sort of dampness that's on your canvas will start to soak through the paper, so be careful. It can rip. It's not a big deal. Sometimes it looks cool if it's ripped, so again, don't be hard on yourself. You'll see where I go over it with water, it becomes even more see-through. It becomes more translucent to pick up the color of the paints behind it. When I leave it like this, it's not as translucent. It's a choice. It's all up to you, whatever you prefer. You can also take it and like crinkle and curl it kind of like this to get different shapes and texture, just more texture with the crinkles. You can pick it up, rearrange it. Just remember the more you move it and the more damp it is, the more likely it is to tear. So it's forgiving in that whatever you do is right. It doesn't matter. It's great. Whatever you're doing, just as long as you're enjoying what you're doing is fine. But if it is something where you want a certain look or style from it, or if that's kind of what you're going for, just bear that in mind that it's very fragile. 
So I'll go to thrift stores and stuff and find old magazines or old books and tear stuff out of those and use them in art. There can be copyright issues with that if you're not planning on selling your work or licensing your work or whatever. If you're just making a project for yourself or for a friend or just playing or whatever, copyright isn't too much of an issue. I wouldn't stress about it. But if copyright is an issue for you, Dover makes these wonderful books of all kinds of themes. I have a ton of them that are all copyright free images. So if you are concerned about that at all, it just, you can get these books, they some have. body stuff. They're men. <laughs> That's the theme of men. But there's ones that are animals. There are some that are in color. There's different patterns. So you could get Art Nouveau patterns, Art Deco patterns. It's anything, <laughs> pretty much anything. There's old travel posters, vintage labels, fun things. And so if you are at all worried about copyright, you can go to these, you can get these, cut them out. I just kind of a tray to hold my stuff because I cut out a lot of things and I don't always use, I don't always use what I think I'm gonna use. So here's a key that I cut out from one of these books. If you wanna put down something like this, this would go down just fine with a um, matte medium or a gloss medium. The only reason I'm using gloss medium today is because I don't have any um, matte medium on hand. That's I don't necessarily want the gloss because it's it's a very noticeable shine. But sometimes the difference in shininess and dull can be a very interesting contrast in your piece as well. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Again, so much of this is just what you like. There's no wrong way to do it. And that's, I don't know, that's what's so beautiful about it. So this is kind of dry, this section here. So I'm putting a light coat of the matte medium down. It's transparent, you can see right through it. Put this down and then I put a little bit of water over it. When you put the water down, it absorbs into the paper and then it absorbs, it just makes all of it kind of wet together and it just kind of seals it in better. You just have to be careful because especially if you're using something that you cut out of a magazine, or something that's cheaper quality of a found print, the ink can come off very easily if you rub it with the brush too much. Like this is fine because it's kind of made to be, you know, beat up by brushes and art and stuff. Other unique things that you might find to put into your work other than just found papers are things like uh, children's, like game cards from children's games, thrift stores, garage sales, things like that. You'll find a lot of funky things. Uh, vintage photographs are really fun. You can find those all sorts of places. Uh, one thing I really like are these kind of paperback uh, romance kind of kitschy covers from back in, I don't know, the 70s maybe. Another thing that you can do, I have drawings like sketch drawings that I did years ago. I have all kinds of random um, just art from sketchbooks or projects that I never really did anything with them, but I just kind of have it sitting around. If you have stuff like that or even pieces that you did on paper or canvas that you liked part of it but you didn't find it really successful, you can always cut out the parts you like and glue those into another piece. Nothing's ever wasted. Just set it aside if it wasn't quite what you wanted, but there were parts that you like, set it aside and revisit it. Because you can either work over it and paint over it another time, or you can kind of cut it apart and take the things that you like and use those. I think it's easy if something doesn't go right to just kind of give up and just stop because it's not looking how you wanted it to look or how you expected it to look. And two things are, it's great to just give up, <laughs> not give up, it's great to give up having an expectation of what you think it should look like. Because when I start painting, I have no idea what the finished painting will look like. Sometimes I'll be three-fourths done with a piece and I finally realize where it's going. So all of them kind of go through weird, awkward phases that are not necessarily the most beautiful or not necessarily what I would consider ideal to what I wanted my piece to, to look like. 
but that's okay. Each artwork has kind of a mind of its own and just let your art be what it wants to be and let it kind of evolve and grow. And I think that's the, again, the biggest part of it is just embracing the joy of, of painting and play. You know, you've been interested in trying painting or you've been kind of curious with what some of the tools are that I use. That's my quick introduction to it. So yeah, again, I'm Carly Swenson and I am a, an intuitive artist out of St. Paul here. So you may have heard plowing during my video because it's winter in St. Paul. So again, if there's a lot of extra ambient noise. I'm sorry for that. Um, but yeah, thank you for taking the time to uh, sit down with me and learn more about my process. And I hope that you, um, that you enjoy it. And if you, you know, do something or you have some ideas or you start painting something and you want to share it in the comments, by all means do. I would certainly, I would love to see what people, what people do and what people try because it's, I don't know, it's just a very beautiful, exciting process, and I like to know that other people are, are out there enjoying it. <laughs>